Good afternoon, dear students. Now let us start uh, with our today's session. Uh, can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. Let us start with our today's session. We have started since yesterday on insulating material and today is the second uh, lecture. I welcome all of you in my lecture. Yesterday we have seen classification based on the thermal withstand ability of the material. And I told you just think logically how you can remember those classes. Why A? Because they are not sequentially A, B, C, D. So how to remember all these classes with uh, their names Y, A, E, B and how to remember the temperature. So I told you how to retain descriptive information. So there have to be some different ways so that you can retain them very fast. So um, I can tell you temperature you can uh, remember with the difference. So if you'll see 15, 15 degree and then how much is 20? 20, uh, 20 differences there and then 25 and 25. So like that you can uh, remember the temperature starting from 90 to 180 degree. 90 and 180 degree is uh, very easy to remember. So initiating uh, figure and uh, end figure you can remember and the difference between that. Then how to remember this class? Uh, just I will show you one video. You just uh, um, see what is there and you can develop your own logic for um, remembering that. So let us see why you can remember you so you so all electricity board field high code. You write down this keyword. You so all electricity board field high court. So you know when yeah. I learn uh, in my uh, college day, my professor also told the same key. Now you can change according to your uh, uh, interest. So you so all electricity board field high court. You can remember like that and just put on this. So one sentence on one phrase you can remember. Okay, so you got the idea how you can remember the classes temperature already I told you can see this uh, another logic so that you will learn how to remember all such different uh, informations. Now what is phrase here? You can see bottom phrase. You are engineers. So you soup instead of that you can just remember you are engineers. You Y R A. Engineers. You are engineers. Okay. Best for hybrid computer. So you are engineers. Best for hybrid computer. Or you can remember you are engineer. Best for high class. 
anything you can remember. So these are the techniques. What I am telling you, different uh, number of skills you have to develop while attending lecture. You should not attend lecture. Only one way that just hearing something, try to absorb, try to retain that information, try to create memory map. We have seen yesterday and uh, number of students created a very good memory map. But today I want it uh, in a more creative way. So let us be ready. I hope you have taken you a pen and notebook also with you and notebook is separate material science that is important for your attendance verification. I have already uh, put up my all lectures recording on my YouTube and I have requested those who have not attended at least you go few first uh, classes so that you will not be lagging. So again today I request that you attend the uh, video lectures if you have missed uh, initial lectures, okay. So this yesterday we have covered and I just showed you with the uh, two videos. So I hope now you have remembered the classes. Okay. So now we will start today properties of insulating material. So we have seen yesterday what are the different classes of insulating material, how we can classify based on the structure or its um, state means uh, solid insulating material, liquid, air, then how we can classify depending upon the components. So that we have seen then temperature ability, how we can classify in different classes. So you all are engineers or you can remember any phrase for that. So classification, I think you have created a very good memory map also after the lecture. So that was good response from you. Today you can start creating memory map for properties of insulating material. What are the different properties of insulating material? So we can see electrical properties, chemical properties, thermal properties. I told you in last lecture that we have to learn different materials for properties, characteristics, applications, uses and what are the different properties? Not only electrical but all thermal, chemical also mechanical also we have to learn. So what are the properties of insulating material? When we can say it is a very good insulating material or a bad insulating material. So before selecting any particular insulating material, it is essential to know various properties of insulating material, electrical, mechanical, thermal, visual, physical. Uh, then uh, suppose you want to use any insulating material in transformer or uh, machine, uh, then you must go in market, you have to purchase material. So what you will give specifications, how you will verify that, how you will measure, how you will test it. So before considering measurement and testing, let us see first which characteristics are required. So we are more focused, we will focus on electrical properties mostly. So if you are talking insulating material, insulation resistance is the most important thing. And you know what is meant by resistance because insulating material will not allow current to flow. They will insulate electricity. So as they will insulate electricity, they will oppose uh, resistance should be very high. So insulation resistance is the most important property. And for insulating material, insulation resistance has to be very high. And I think you might have measured in first year with the help of MEGAR. So unit of this insulation resistance will be in mega ohm or kilo ohm. If you will get resistance in ohm, you cannot say it is insulating material. Then you can say it is a resistive material. Okay, because resistive material also will have high resistance. But insulation resistance has to be in mega ohm or kilo ohm. Then next property is dielectric strength and number of experiments are there on measuring dielectric strength of air, liquid, solid. So we'll see what is mean by dielectric strength also. Then dielectric constant, I think you are familiar with the dielectric constant and loss tangent. So loss tangent is represented as tan delta. So if you'll see resistance, it is the property. What is insulation resistance? You must able to define. So insulation resistance, it is the property by virtue of which it opposes, by virtue of which material opposes the flow of leakage current. Why word use is as leakage current? Because we have seen in insulating material, current will not be zero. It will be there in micro home. So that current is called as leakage current. So insulation resistance is the property by virtue of which material opposes the flow of leakage current. 
then its unit will be in mega ohm it should be very high and whenever definition is asked you who have you should have a habit of writing unit also because even if definition is asked go on writing unit there are two types of uh, insulation resistance so what are the two types of insulation resistance volume resistance and surface resistance now you know what is the meaning of volume suppose you are using mobile you are attending my session with mobile so what is the volume of mobile if you are attending with pc laptop what is the volume of uh, your laptop so that resistance given by volume of the object and surface resistance means only you will consider one surface so try to understand when you are considering volume resistance suppose this is a cube so you can see how the current will flow if you are talking about the volume resistance it will uh, pass through the volume we see this height is required length is required breadth breadth is required so volume has to be considered and what will be the resistance offered to the current but when you are talking with the surface resistivity then current will transfer longitudinal way so it will be transferred like this so only surface resistance will be considered so that is the difference between the two resistance ma'am yes ma'am i have a doubt in volume and surface yes yes ma'am but when the current flows from the surface uh -huh. that sheet also has some kind of value for oh, volume sorry yes yes see now in a short way i can tell you when you are considering this volume way uh, where voltage will be applicable your current flow will be in this direction means suppose consider a cable okay and in the cable you know that uh, current transports through the conducting material of the cable suppose this is cable only okay flat cable you can consider and now current is transferred through the conducting material of the cable so that uh, length will be you will consider current is transferred through the longitudinal so this way current is transferred where the current is supposed to transfer in this way means from conductor to the insulation surrounding insulation no so current will not transfer in the volume try to understand current will transfer from one end of the conductor to the another end of conductor and how the conductor will be covered conductor will be covered with the insulation and as it is covered with the insulation then this current flow will not be there it will be the early catch current but it is not intended to flow current this way so you will consider the current uh, is transferred through this way longitudinal way only means surface resistance is considered there so what will be resistance of your conducting material of the cable that will be surface resistance now you are considering suppose insulation resistance and here suppose this thick cable insulation is there jute is there then different layers armor cable uh, you can consider different layers and now you want to measure the resistance of that insulation where current will be passed longitudinal through the conducting material this way but you are interested to see how much leakage current flows through the insulation of the cable and then that whole volume of the uh, insulation of the cable you will consider why volume see this will be the thickness of that cable insulating material and this length will be also there because cable is throughout one end to another end suppose this is from chinswad to the pune station cable is laid so you will consider this whole length of the cable also and leakage current will flow in this direction so that way in that case volume will come take place clear understood or no yes ma'am hmm. consider imaging cable then you will understand the difference so insulation at least therefore i took this figure because uh, with description uh, it will not be clear mm, then insulation resistance so volume resistance resistance offered now you see the definition now you will understand so volume resistance offered to the current which flows through a unit cube of a material cube because volume you are considering so centimeter cube or meter cube so volume resistance is the resistance offered to the current which flows through a unit cube of a material is called as volume resistance and what will be unit ohm centimeter ohm meter why why it will be there resistance you are considering or it is resistivity i think it is not the resistance unit resistance unit will be always in kilo ohm or um, uh, this ohm 
so this should be resistivity so forget about the unit here then surface resistance it is the numerically equal to the resistance of a unit surface over the surface of insulating material so when you are considering surface then you will consider centimeter square so this should be divided divided resistivity if you will consider then you will find out the resistance and through what area it is passed so centimeter square for surface and centimeter cube for ohm now another electrical parameter or characteristic important is breakdown voltage this is very important because always in uh, material science number of experiments are there to find out breakdown voltage and breakdown strength so what is breakdown voltage it's not the physical breakdown suppose you consider paper your paper notebook paper is a insulating material and uh, you want to find out breakdown voltage of the paper means not uh, the voltage at which that paper will break down physically but it will be the voltage at which that paper will start conducting suppose you are inserting your uh, paper of the notebook in between the two electrode and you are applied voltage across that paper and you will go on increasing the voltage across the paper uh, current will not flow because paper is a insulating material but if you will go on increasing voltage very high and that has to be kilovolt or mega volt because for insulating material you will not observe current uh, when voltage is in holes might be it is 1000 volt 100 volt because it is insulating material it will be very small leakage current so with normal ammeter you, you may not uh, get the deflection also but you when your voltage will be in kilovolt or mega volt you will start observing current means now current has started flowing through your paper or insulating material means that has breakdown now that is converted from insulating material to the uh, conductor because current has started flowing so that is breakdown voltage so how you will define breakdown voltage it is the value of voltage at which it causes electrical rupture so it is the breakdown of insulating properties breakdown voltage is the voltage or value of voltage at which it causes electrical rupture of an insulating material so i will simply say breakdown voltage is the voltage at which insulating properties of the material get destructed destroyed rupture you can use any word but try to understand it is the breakdown of electrical properties insulating properties and its unit is kilovolt or mega volt then dielectric strength it is the voltage i can say that my paper voltage has breakdown at suppose 10 kilovolt so 10 kilovolt i have observed current started flowing through the paper but what will be dielectric strength so dielectric strength is the ability of my paper to withstand the maximum stress because when i applied 1 kilovolt or when i increase the voltage my paper face some lot of stress because high voltage is across that something happening in the material so the stress it was bearing paper was bearing but when voltage was 10 kilovolt paper destructed ruptured means paper started conducting so what was the ability of the paper to bear maximum stress without destruction of insulating properties that will be dielectric strength so it is the voltage and here it is the ability so how you will define dielectric strength it is the maximum strength strength or you can say ability which material withstands without destruction of insulating properties so dielectric strength strength only is used word so you can use stress it is the maximum stress which material bears withstands without destruction of insulating properties now confusion is always there where the word used to be maximum or minimum here maximum word is not used here maximum word is used here uh, you can put uh, it is the minimum voltage uh, what what material destructs so confusion is there you try to remember your own way you should not exchange the word maximum and minimum now unit of dielectric strength will be kilovolt per mm suppose i have applied paper in the electrode and my paper thickness was 1 cm huge thick thick paper i used then that 10 kilovolt divided by the thickness of paper 10 will be its strength so 10 divided by 10 uh, 1 cm means 10 mm so 10 divided by 10 1 
So breakdown strength of my paper will be one kilo hold per mm. So this should be kilo hold, uh, not kn. So either the breakdown strength is in kilo hold per mm or kilo hold per centimeter or kilo hold per meter. It will be not kilo hold per meter because see if your thickness will be in meter, then uh, its breakdown voltage has to be mega hold. So sometimes in book also corrections are there. Uh, because see for online lectures, I had to prepare first PPT. So that is very much time consuming. At least two hours are required for one lecture preparation. So another characteristics, electrical characteristics are dielectric constant, loss tangent. Now we'll see as and when they will be there uh, in the chapters. Uh, visual properties means how insulating material look, whether it is porous or no. Uh, then uh, what is the appearance, uh, then color, crystallinity, the, all these you can understand with this. Then mechanical properties are also important because see when I am using cable, suppose a cable insulating material we are studying and cable is uh, used overhead, means overhead cable is there or even underground cable is there. So how much stress it has to withstand, whole uh, weight of uh, the soil, stones it has to withstand. Then uh, mechanical properties of that insulation should be very strong, otherwise it will break down. Suppose uh, you can consider any overhead cable also and it is hanging, uh, means suspended. It is also bearing the pressure of wind, ice, wind velocity. So mechanical property, if uh, it is not strong, then uh, finally it will break down. So even if we are talking electrical uh, means insulating materials, mechanical property has to be there. So what are those mechanical properties? Mechanical strength is important. Here it is not mentioned, but mechanical strength is there. Uh, means you have seen uh, the lungs, uh, Young's uh, constant modulus. What is the strain ability? How much maximum stress it can be or mechanical stress? Then viscosity. Suppose liquid is there. Suppose I am using transform oil. So how much it is viscous? What is the porosity, solubility? Because this can be general properties for any material, liquid material, gaseous material. Then thermal properties, melting point. What is the melting point? Yesterday we have seen at what uh, temperature cotton um, uh, balls melt, another uh, melts. So melting point is also important property for any insulating material, flash point. So flash point, if you see the transform oil and uh, then uh, you are taking breakdown voltage and you are varying the voltage in kilo holes, that oil may be ignited due to very high voltage temperature increase in that. So at what voltage means oil must bear some temperature? At what uh, voltage that oil will start uh, flashing or burning? firing that is also important thermal stability is also important otherwise thermal runway will happen yesterday you have seen how material started melting so thermal capability should be good temperature rise limit withstanding capability should be good thermal conductivity is uh, also taking place because if thermal conductivity is not good then heat will go on increasing in the material itself and then the destruction of insulating material will take place so thermal conductivity should be good, then thermal heat generated in the insulating material will be conducted to its surface and the from surface it will be radiated in atmosphere. So that are essential. Thermal expansion is also important. Otherwise, due to the temperature rise, uh, material dimensions will change. Expansion will take place. Volatility, how material is volatile? If suppose it will cause firing itself at a high temperature, high stress then uh, hazardous things can happen in your electrical devices. So all these properties are important. Chemical properties are also important. Otherwise, you are using paper, suppose in, in the you are insulating material and at a high temperature that paper is having chemical reactions with the electrode. Some uh, liquid is created due to the chemical reaction and that uh, chemical uh, liquid will cause uh, dis, uh, damage to the device. It is not required. So chemical changes, chemical stability uh, has to be there. Gretching, hygroscopicity, resistance to external chemical. So just uh, see this and then with particular material, we will go on seeing what is its property. OK. <coughs> Oh, you are hearing so 
noise or no? I forgot to share noise. Students? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma then earlier video also, you just uh, forgot to tell me to share the sound of the video. You just watch it and nobody told me. Are you attending lecture or no? Insulating, but we are clear. Acha insulating material me kya kya characteristics ma chahiye. Wo dekhenge. This is just to revise because I if I will go on talking. First, talking, very high insulating resistance. So just changing the voice. Uska jo insulating resistance jo hai, wo bhi high hona chahiye. Jitna jada hoga, utna acha hai. Koi bhi. Insulating material. Second, high dielectric strength, low thermal expansion. Thermal expansion low होना चाहिए. नहीं रो नहीं रहा तो अच्छी बात है. लेकिन ज़्यादा नहीं होना चाहिए. अने जैसे वो heat मिलता है और वो expand होता है. ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए. कोई भी एक insulating material. Fourth जो है non inflammable when exposed to arcing koi bhi chingari ya aag ke contact mein aaye to usme jalanshil nahi hona chahiye aag nahi pakadna chahiye chautha panchwa resistant to oil or liquid gas fume acid and alkalis to koi bhi oil ho liquid ho gas ho fumes गैस फ्यूम्स एसिड एल्कली उसका उसके ऊपर कोई असर नहीं होना चाहिए कोई रिएक्शन नहीं होना चाहिए उस इंसुलेटिंग मटेरियल पे छठा जो है शुड हैव नो डिटोरेटिंग इफेक्ट ऑन द मटेरियल इन कांटेक्ट विद इट तो ऑयल लिक्विड गैस फ्यूम एसिड्स इनके कांटेक्ट में आने के बाद इंसुलेटिंग मटेरियल जो है वो डिटोरेट नहीं होना चाहिए सड़ना नहीं चाहिए सातवा जो है गुड थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी टेम्परेचर बढ़ने से कंडक्टिविटी क्या हो जाता है थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी जो है वो क्या होना चाहिए गुड होना चाहिए है ना हीट जो है जल्दी से जल्दी पास हो जाना चाहिए उसमें वहां पे वो प्रिजर्व करके स्टोर करके नहीं रखना चाहिए तो शुड हैव गुड थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी हाई मैकेनिकल स्ट्रेंथ तो मजबूत भी काफी होना चाहिए कोई भी इंसुलेटिंग मटेरियल जो है उसमें यह महत्वपूर्ण कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स है हाई मैकेनिकल स्ट्रेंथ हाई थर्मल स्ट्रेंथ हाई थर्मल स्ट्रेंथ मींस हीट होने के बावजूद भी वो हीट सहन करने की ताकत होना चाहिए उसमें उसके बाद नेक्स्ट दसवा जो पॉइंट है शुड बी रेजिस्टेंट टू थर्मल एंड केमिकल डिटोरेशन तो यही है कि ज्यादा टेम्परेचर से वो पिघलना नहीं चाहिए या जलना नहीं चाहिए तो वो थर्मल रेजिस्टेंट एंड केमिकल डिटोरेशन जो है वो नहीं होना चाहिए शुड बी रेजिस्टेंट टू मॉइस्चर एब्जॉर्बन और उसमें एक खास ये प्रॉपर्टी होना ही चाहिए कि वो मॉइस्चर को एब्जॉर्ब ना करे मॉइस्चर कोई भी इंसुलेटिंग मटेरियल अगर मॉइस्चर का एब्जॉर्ब करता है तो वो कंडक्टिविटी उसका बढ़ जाता है उससे वो लीकेज हो सकता है पंचर हो सकता है या फिर शॉक का खतरा हो सकता है उस इंसुलेटिंग मटेरियल से ठीक तो ये ग्यारह जो है इंसुलेटिंग मटेरियल का गुड कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स है ये कैरेक्टरिस्टिक जो है उसमें शुड है Okay, so now you have understood uh, characteristics and when we learn one material by one, then we'll see all the details of the particular material characteristics. Yes? Ma'am, I have a couple of doubts about the characteristics. Yes, yes ask. Ma'am, what will happen when thermal expansion will take place? 
in yes. into the uh, now we'll see imagine the cable only okay and uh, if cable material what insulating material is used and if it is not having good suppose thermal uh, expansion means uh, if it is not uh, having good strength then what will happen uh, when current is passed through the cable heat is produced i square r heat and cables are generally used for high voltage transmission or underground things means for high voltage and as the voltage is high i square r heat will be also there and due to that what will happen temperature will increase and the thermal expansion capability or thermal strength of that material is not good then what will happen material expansion means length will change thickness will change suppose thickness is initially insulation thickness is 1 cm when we, we have seen volume resistivity and in that volume resistivity we have seen height means thickness height is 1 cm and due to the high increase in temperature that thickness has reduced to the uh, suppose half cm now resistance will change because you have studied resistance r uh, rho r is equal to rho l by a so what will happen if dimensions area thickness is change resistivity will drop so you have also studied positive um, coefficient negative coefficient so per degree change in temperature there are changes taking place in the material so thermal capability means both capability strength also should be there and conduction thermal conduction capability should be there both are different thermal conduction means what now that cable insulating material thickness is 1 cm now whatever heat will be produced in that uh, cable it has to transfer immediately towards the surrounding of the cable means conduction of that insulating material of the cable thermal conduction should be good and if thermal conduction is good then only heat generated in the core inside the cable it will bring outside the cable surface and then from the surface it will be dissipated in the surrounding if thermal conduction is not good then what will happen heat generated in the core inside it will not come up outside and then thermal run away means that uh, you can say uh, thickness will go on expanding means expansion means what melting i told you yesterday you have seen but before melting they just expand means ice ice will melt first means ice will expand first understood yes ma'am but thermal conductivity in case of thermal conductivity uh, mm -hmm. we have learned that resistance is directly proportional to the temperature of the conductor right okay but that is for conducting material for insulating material characteristic is different you know you tell me conducting metal resistance increases or decreases if temperature is increased decreases huh resistance decreases if temperature of conducting material is increased then resistance decreases no no i am talking about insulating material okay ha huh. then so then what actually, do you want to ask no actually you cleared my doubt in your first sentence only then you asked no, the question what is your doubt what is second doubt no 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 i asked that doubt uh, if thermal conductivity is low then uh, it should help the insulator to increase the resistance but you cleared it with a sentence that it is only applicable yes. to the conductor so yes yes that is what there is the main difference between the conducting material and insulating i told you positive temperature coefficient of resistance and negative temperature coefficient of resistance so in case of insulating material we must take all these insulating temperature means increase in temperature that's why yesterday we saw that table and whenever you just see the material uh, sorry devices suppose transform um, rotating machines on the nameplate of the electrical devices insulation class has to be marked there so i will see suppose it if it is a y class uh, marked on the nameplate immediately in the market i will say oh this is only class y insulating material sir use no i don't want because my industry there will be larger ambient temperature also so 90 degree is not sufficient so i must purchase high class c class like that i will decide so depending upon temperature ability means temperature increase how much temperature increase that material can withstand even if material are same yesterday i showed you difference silk and cotton 
silk and cotton are in class Y also and higher class also. Then why the temperature rise uh, capability is different? Because material we can treat differently. Suppose I can do the impregnation, simple paper, uh, notebook paper you are using and insulating material that will be having a different temperature rise capability. But if we impregnate that paper, we just dip that paper into the liquid insulating material and heat it, it's a uh, 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 thermal properties or insulation resistance will change very drastically. So it will become a very good insulating material. So in the paper or just paper, cotton, I will add some another fibers or some treatment I will do. Then definitely uh, that will increase higher temperature limit. So material can be same, but composition can be little bit different. Clear to you all doubts? Yes, ma'am. Yes. OK, so now we we'll see if we consider the solid insulating material, different materials we are going to study. Now I told you the syllabus also. So but when you consider solid insulating material, we can consider as a paper and press board one time or we can compare between paper and press board. Then fibrous materials in fibrous material impregnated and non impregnated. I just told you difference between impregnated. Impregnated means treated with the insulating oil, non impregnated means without any treatment. So fibrous material impregnated, non impregnated, then impregnated coating, filling and binding materials. So binding materials are also different. Coating fillings means also different means you can see the paint. Sometimes we are just doing the paint. So why we are doing paint? Because that paint also act as a insulating material. So that coating we are doing. So that there are different materials for binding and coating also we can see resins and polymers then natural and synthetic rubber, but it's not in syllabus. Just I'm telling you whatever are mentioned in syllabus that only we'll see. Then organic insulating materials, glass, ceramic, asbestos and composite materials. So we'll see uh, first paper. Uh, let us start with paper and then I will finish today and uh, in uh, next lecture we'll consider different another solid insulating materials. So paper we have talk. Just consider your notebook paper. It is also insulating material. But generally papers are made up from cellulose. Yesterday we have seen the cellulose or glass or asbestos. If paper is made up of glass and asbestos, definitely it's breakdown voltage, breakdown strength will be higher. Then generally soft wood fibers are also used for the paper. You know that uh, how newspapers are made. Uh, they are used from the trees also. Recycled papers are also there. Uh, so we can say that wood is also used fiber wood is also used for making paper and paper can be classified as low density and medium density and of course density will also play in the role of breakdown voltage because density means number of molecules atoms will be different and when current starts flowing your atom number of atoms plays important role so paper will be low density and medium density and the important physical properties of paper, if you'll see the thickness, because if thickness is high, then definitely breakdown strength will be high. Breakdown voltage will be high because we have seen breakdown strength is equal to breakdown voltage divided by thickness. And then the density is important. Finishing is also important in high voltage or for insulating material. Even a small micron notch on insulating material will lead to the breakdown voltage. So finishing is very important. Porosity is important because if material will be porous, then it absorbs liquid and you know the liquid is conducting. So when uh, porosity is more, breakdown voltage will be less. Then tensile strength is important. Why tensile strength is also important? Because uh, suppose wire, you are using a, a cable insulation. So cable has to draw over the wires, means length. So tensile strength should be also properly there. Otherwise, you will not make the material in design form. Then tearing resistance, because if your paper will be having immediately tearing, then uh, your device, uh, how it will act, your paper has teared. So it will not withstand high voltage. So that all mechanical, thermal, chemical, physical properties are important. Density has greater influence on dielectric strength. I told you how. When we learn that breakdown voltage, you will come to know and dielectric loss also. How the dielectric loss is related to the density? Because see, when current is changed, resistance is changed. Loss means it is power loss, I square R loss. So when resistance will change, I square R loss will change. 
cellulose has a very strong affinity for water you know that cellulose absorbs water and if paper is made up of cellulose then it should be uh, having more uh, repellent moisture repellent uh, coating you can use or you can see moisture content has a very pronounced effect on physical and electrical properties of paper and if you are using cellulose definitely it will absorb water that care has to be taken or you can coat your uh, paper with some another material then paper being hygroscopic hygroscopic means it absorbs the water then it is dried and impregnated so see this uh, weakness of cellulose having attracting affinity for the moisture it can also use uh, by impregnation you uh, immerse your paper in any insulating material varnish treatment heat them and then that will avoid porosity water porosity and this moisture repellent will be also there so common impregnate impregnates means i am telling you the liquid insulating material varnish what can be that impregnants impregnants means which material can be used to dip that or treat that paper vegetable oils mineral oils so they are insulating materials only and what are the applications of uses of paper where you will find out paper as a insulating material so you will find out in transformers then capacitors and cables so low density paper is preferred in high frequency capacitors so paper capacitor you might have studied so high frequency capacitors they are used because paper is also dielectric material it stores energy also so they are used in paper then cables paper are also used in cables but they will be not normal paper depending upon the voltage of cable you will select the paper so dielectric loss and discharge current will be low so why paper are preferred in this because dielectric loss of the paper because you know uh, dielectric constant <coughs> dielectric constant of the materials are different so dielectric loss will also depend upon the constant so discharge current and loss is less uh, regarding the paper therefore it is preferred in the cable medium density papers are also used in paper capacitors and also energy storage capacitor so watch this how you can prepare paper uh, whether cellulose is good or fiber glass is good glass is used uh, preferred which is more uh, advantageous so what you can say whether cellulose is good or fiber glass is good what's your opinion fiberglass okay you, okay uh, in some fiber cases glass. okay fiber glass is also good uh, that is our common sense or what we know but see what are the benefits of cellulose over fiberglass so you can see even paper is made up of cellulose it can be good depending upon name uh, number of considerations as compared to the fiberglass so it is environment friendly you can use recycling so watch this Hey, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver, and today we're going to be talking about cellulose insulation compared to fiberglass insulation. And we have a little demonstration house here, and here we have a, a light bulb that obviously produces heat, well, incandescent light bulb, right? Not the light bulbs that we use here, but uh, the old-fashioned Thomas Edison kind is producing a lot of heat. So here we have cellulose insulation on the left side and fiberglass insulation on the right side. And we have little thermometers here and it says 70 degrees inside here and 70 it started at 70 degrees. It's moving up already. And we're going to see what happens through the course of this video over a few minutes to the temperatures and how the heat can penetrate that uh, insulation. So what is cellulose insulation? Well, you know all that uh, paper that you send for recycling, whether it be newspaper or paper bags or your phone books and so forth. Well, they grind all that up and make cellulose insulation out of it. Seems pretty simple, but there's some special things they do to make it perform like it has to in your home. First of all, you don't want the cellulose insulation to get moldy if it gets damp. And there is a special additive called boric acid that prevents mold uh, from growing on the cellulose. Uh, the boric acid has also been used as early as 19, in the 1940s, they used it to um, deter uh, insects uh, safely, and it's still safe for that purpose. Uh, so uh, insects do not like it, and insects will not eat your insulation, and it works very, very well. It's also treated with a fire retardant so that it doesn't burn uh, as you might expect 
ground up paper to do. Now I've just had the lamp on this demo uh, box here just for a few minutes and you can see that the temperature of the cellulose is still 70 degrees and over here it's 81 degrees in this fiberglass. I mean a dramatic difference already and literally it has been about 120 seconds since I turned this thing on. Um, not very long at all and so you can imagine what would happen in your attic if you in a wintertime condition the heat trying to go up into the cold attic or in the summertime condition the superheated attic 120 degrees trying to you know heat moves from more to less and that's the point of insulation is it has to resist heat flow that's what r value means resistance to heat flow and in the summertime you have to resist that heat from penetrating to your drywall and making your drywall hot and your drywall would just be a big radiant heater on the top of your uh, each room and um, your insulation is supposed to prevent that. So we have a, a really, um, it's still 70 on the cellulose side, just in the time I've been talking, this went up six degrees, it's now uh, 85.9. Another thing about cellulose insulation is, is that it's very good at uh, preventing sound from traveling through your house. You can make your house a lot quieter. And here we have a demonstration where we're gonna take this personal alarm, and I don't know how this is gonna work on video here, but I'm gonna pull this, gonna make a very loud noise. Okay, and if, uh, I don't know if the microphone can do it justice, but that is annoying. And so we're gonna drop it in there, and we're gonna put this, uh, it's in this cellulose box, and that is absolutely amazing. I mean, I can barely hear it inside that box. And uh, so cellulose will make your home much quieter. We dense packed a garage ceiling with cellulose insulation and uh, one uh, homeowner said that in the very early morning her husband would go out and she'd still be sleeping and she could hear the garage door going up while he was backing out at uh, five in the morning and that's how you know she knew uh, she woke up when he was on his way to work. Well after we insulated that garage ceiling which was her bedroom floor uh, there wasn't that hollow sound walking over the floor, but she didn't hear that garage door that next morning, and she had wondered, did he go to work? Where is he? So uh, really amazing. When you install it in the attic, you get a similar effect. There's uh, wind noise uh, from a vented attic. There is uh, road noise uh, from cars passing by and for attic floors, uh, and there's lots of different uses for cellulose. We did a fire test with a torch and burned many different insulation materials fiberglass bats, open cell spray foam, closed cell spray foam, poly isocyanurate board foam, extruded polystyrene board foam, expanded polystyrene board foam, and two other products called Aircrete and Cellulose. And by far, by a mile, the two best performing, just outdistanced the rest, uh, best performing insulations were uh, Aircrete and Cellulose. They both performed equally, absolutely fantastic. All right, now it's been about 10 minutes or so since we've had this, uh, this light bulb on, and look at the difference. It's 74 degrees in the cellulose, just it came up about four degrees, and the fiberglass is 104 degrees. Absolutely amazing. Oh, why would you ever want this in your house? You can see if you have it, which most homes do, it is really severely underperforming. And if you have fiberglass bats in your attic, we will move them to air seal the attic floor and to cover your can lights and your attic hatch and uh, around your chimney and all the places where air can get from your house up into that vented attic. And then we will put those bats back and then we will blow cellulose insulation over the fiberglass bats and we'll cap it off. And the cellulose is much more these in odd shape framing cavities that uh, the fiberglass will perform so much better than what you have in your home right now. One of the questions people often have about cellulose insulation is, what about if it catches fire? I mean, if it's ground up paper, wouldn't it just catch fire very easily and my house will be engulfed in flames before I can get out? Well, actually, it's quite amazing that cellulose performs better than any other insulation, almost. There's only one other insulation that performs equally as well as cellulose, but it's uh, not very common. Uh, and we can see that uh, I'm holding a chunk of cellulose here and I put a penny on top, so forth, and 
uh, it's quite amazing. There's a video online called The Big Burn, The Truth About Cellulose Insulation. And in it, they built three different houses, uh, fiberglass insulation, burned. So you have considered how cellulose is and better in what way it is better than the fiberglass. So what we think always, it's not uh, true. So that way we can see uh, from different perceptions. Uh, perceptions. Uh, so cellulose is better than fiberglass with respect to a number of things. You can, uh, you have also seen uh, how much uh, temperature rise it withstand or what would be the thermal runaway in that case, uh, catching the fires. Uh, definitely, you can see uh, in foreign countries, these cellulose papers are also used for wall insulation also. Uh, weight wise also, you can see it is uh, light in weight. Number of advantages are there, recycling is there. And that is why we can see papers are also preferred uh, in number of electrical devices. So I want to just talk about practical part B. Uh, already I told you, you start with activity 13 uh, or it can be 16. So now let us see what part we have covered or let us consider this unit 3. And on unit 3, I already told you five topics which you can think. Uh, start completing uh, activities uh, individually so that your six activities will be completed. And last date of uh, completing this activity 13 is 19th July. Okay. So try to not completing, but uh, telling which activity you will do just for selection, selection of topic, write down in your notebook because again and again you are forgetting. Select the topic for your activity 13 and last date your topic should go to Rohit up to next Sunday, 19 July. OK, so select your topic. What is activity 13? Activity 13 is a modern tool uses preparing video use any ICT tools and uh, perform the activity. Uh, so first uh, attend two days workshop on paper writing. First activity I told first activity is on paper publication and uh, two days workshop is there uh, Sunday and Monday. So you attend that workshop, uh, you, you will get benefit how to write down paper. So I have posted in material science WhatsApp group one browser. You register it because it might be limited. Then topics I have given on this uh, five uh, third unit five topics I have given uh, you start thinking on that. So activity 13 uh, where you want to use um, advanced tool uses ICT tool uses. You can think first topic uh, focusing on insulating materials using power and distribution transformer. Like I am demonstrating you with video. You collect video animations and just present uh, uh, using uh, our um, Microsoft only that is also ICT tool only and if you will connect collect uh, animations and videos from the internet that means you are selecting the tool and uh, you are presenting so 10 minutes presentation you can do on insulating materials for power and distribution transformer. I already told one student will take one activity so I will give choice uh, first come first basis. So if one student will take this uh, topic, another students will not be allowed to take same topic. So be hurry up, uh, try to complete your activity. So activity 13th, you can take this uh, and just present it uh, as I am doing now, uh, demonstrating with videos or you can do your own animation PPT. That way also you can present 10 minutes presentation uh, will be there. Rotating machine is second topic. Motors, uh, what insulating materials are used, where they are used, cut section of the machines. So you can demonstrate it. Or capacitors, cables, line insulators, and switch gears. Okay. So this activity you have to give the topic uh, up to Sunday, and uh, then uh, next next to next week means after 19th which Saturday will be there. We will complete uh, that activity in Saturday's uh, lecture. We will complete this your presentation, 10 minutes presentation, if you will select this in Saturday lecture part B. So that your part B activity 13 will be completed. Then also I can tell you one uh, idea that debate, you can conduct debate uh, paper and praise board. Suppose now I presented you videos. Uh, that uh, debate may not be only oral. It can be video based also. Suppose now uh, <coughs> two students have taken this debate. 
and one student has taken paper another student has taken praise board praise board we are sitting now in class the same way we will be sitting the student who has taken paper he will start defeating how paper is strong and another students will start defeating how praise board paper praise board is there so it can be through oral discussions ppt videos anyway so 10 minutes will be given so that will be it will be fantastic uh, it should be debate uh, then uh, topics can be paper fiber any you see like this just i am giving uh, examples porcelain asbestos air sf6 so what will be the advantage not only your activity will be completed but what uh, you are presenting that will be benefited to whole class and that will be revision also retention will be also good way and uh, this debate can be in your written form suppose you had drawn memory maps that way also you can just uh, uh, share the screen suppose paper he is telling how applications of paper are more immediately praise board students can uh, show his memory graph chart he will share his chart like that uh, showing the applications of praise uh, board like that okay so that i already told you about the um, part b we will start it i referred all these videos from the internet so i would like to say thank you now if any doubt is there you ask me any doubt is there any doubt is there any doubt